Okay, what was his deal with the yellow Ferraris? Um, well, the whole flea market was yellow. Okay. And I think the drive-in movie theater started yellow, but there was just a yellow theme everywhere. Like, look behind us when we're talking. Yeah, 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 I know, I yellow. see that, yeah. yeah. So he's got the yellow F50. Tom drove the yellow F50. Yeah. That's ridiculous. Yeah. I'm going to be driving his F50 today, so it's not going to be an all bad day for me. What color is it? It's yeah. like, not idea. Thank you. It's, it's absolutely <laughs> yellow. Shockingly yellow. Right around 1990, Piero Ferrari was driving an F40 as a daily driver to and from the factory and his home. His idea, based on that remarkable car, the F40, was to create this car, the F50. And let me tell you, from what we know about Ferrari, there's very few guys who can actually come up with a concept and get it done. Well, the basic concept was to get as close to their F1 car as possible for a car that was not only good on the track, but good on the street as well. So I'm looking at it, and I was reading about the engine, and it sounds like that oh, is the baddest engine out of it, the F40 or the Enzo. Yeah, no, it's, it's, a, it's a trick engine and trick chassis, and really, I would say from that era, probably the closest to a race car. They really wanted to make it a supercar. A, a, yeah, a street legal race car. Yeah. It was very much like a 333 SP. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, there's no doubt about it. This is based on a, a race car. The uh, creature comforts in here are virtually nil. Now, this particular car is set up on Pirelli P0s. There's no way I'm going to be able to get them hot enough to make this car perform. But on the other hand, you're gonna need a track to make it perform anyway. The thing I like most about this car is that it's obvious when you look at it that it's a well-used car. The dash is far from pristine. The Pirelli P0s are still on it from the last track day. But still, we can open it up. I'll tell you this, when you do that, it demands all of your attention. As far as the inside of the cockpit are concerned, there are some gauges, and once you've seen where the red line is, you don't really need to look at them anymore. But I do care about hearing this thing sing. Let's try it one more time. Okay, so. Where was this? Does he have a little like test track at his no, place? No, it was basically the parking lot across the street because when they were jammed up on the weekends, they'd have these laneways that you would park in. Okay, so okay. it was up and down the laneways that were all paved. Oh, because yeah. it really looks like a racetrack yeah. that you guys were on. Yeah. So did he ever, like, is that where he took his cars out? Just no, to... no, he was a racer. Yep. He ran Daytona and stuff with some big name guys. So he would go to the track. He used all of his cars. He was, a, he was right into it. Say what you want about a Ferrari, any Ferrari, but nothing, and I mean nothing, beats that feeling. So, you have to ask yourself, do you need a car like this? Well, nobody really needs about a half million dollar supercar, but do you want a car like this? I'm telling you, compared to the Enzo, the F40, this car is remarkable, yeah. I want a car like this, except, may I have mine in red, please? <laughs> Look at the nice little edit you guys did. <laughs> Very high tech. So you were bang on there. Tom said it was about a half million dollar supercar. Yeah. 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 To see the owner's stories about the 275 GTB Comp Special, Preston Hen's collection and his story, and to see us drive his yellow F50, click on the playlist on the screen now.